member of the English department here at Vanderbilt. Uh, I've been here since um, uh, the mid-90s, and I'm currently uh, director of creative writing. I uh, had my connection with the library. Well, it's a connection in general with libraries. I was went to undergraduate school at the University of Virginia. I was part of the second class of women allowed to matriculate there. And I'm always proud to say that I was the very first female who was hired to shelve books in the Alderman Library. And I had to insist on my rights as a feminist in 1973, I think, uh, right when Title IX had just been passed, ensuring those rights to be hired. Um, they never hired a girl before. So everywhere I go, I've taught at a number of universities and colleges over the years, over the course of my career. Um, I always seek out the library right away. And probably everything that uh, the current generation of undergraduate students find a little off-putting about libraries, the smell, the books, <laughs> the, you know, sort of warren of, of rooms with cozy nooks. That's everything that I love about libraries. So um, I recall that actually on the day when I first came here for my interview, I came into the library afterwards to take a look at it and see what it was like. So Thank since you. then I've had a lot of uh, uh, association with the library. Most recently and most notably, um, the library very generously offered itself as the site for the annual conference of the ALSCW, Association of Literary Scholars and Creative Writers. And for two days, early in three days, early in November, we were um, we converged on the on Herd Library, and you all were really wonderful about it. Thank you. Um, we're here in the Vanderbilt Authors Room to talk to Kate about her book loves. Laura Miller writes that the first book we fall in love with shapes us every bit as much as the first person we fall in love with and that emotional attachment also may affect choices we make as an adult. So I'm going to ask you some questions about books that you've loved. Um, what was the first book you fell in love with? Well, you know, you gave me the questions in advance, so I've been thinking about it a lot. Um, I think there were two books that I fell in love with almost simultaneously <clears throat> that I remember as full-length collections. I fell in love with reading and with words as soon as I could do anything with them, which was at age five in kindergarten. When I learned, my first word was read, R-E-D. And from then on, it was a permanent love affair. But the books that I remember, and I was thinking about why these two books, not only that I had passionate reading relationships with them, when I was, I, I think, nine years old. Um, but it was also that they both came to me in different ways. One came to me through a purchase that I made myself, and the other one came to me through a library. The one that came to me <coughs> through a library was um, a, probably a very common one for readers of my generation, Little House on the Prairie by Laura Ingalls Wilder. And I can remember I got that through my girlfriend's, my best friend's family's library card. My family didn't have library cards. I grew up poor in um, Southside Richmond, Virginia in the 1950s and 60s. And uh, one thing we didn't do in the kind of general social disenfranchisement that a lot of people living in poverty exist within is we didn't have library cards. Probably my parents thought they would cost something, but of course they didn't cost anything. Then I discovered the whole world of libraries through my friend's family, and they checked out Little House on the Prairie for me, and that started me on that journey. So I remember the excitement of reading that and staying up at night. I read it all in one night with the flashlight, the typical thing under the covers, and my mother coming in hour after hour going, you've got to go to sleep, you've got to go to bed tomorrow. So that was that one. Um, that's probably what started my lifelong love of libraries. Um, the other one was a book I bought myself, and it was a, I bought it after church on Sunday on a, a wire twirl around rack at the Branches uh, Pharmacy in uh, Chesterfield County, Virginia. And it was a paperback copy, full length collection of um, Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. And uh, that I also passionately consumed. As far as I can remember, it was around the same time for both of those. So. What made those two books so special to you? Well, they were about girls. <laughs> they were about, in particular, strong, feisty girls, you know. So I would have been reading these in the early 1960s, and, it, you know, socially, we just weren't as aware of how important it is for every person in their, every child in his or her individuality to have, be able to find themselves in reading. So without understanding it, 
and with, I guess, a great deal of good fortune, I came upon these two books really early and was oriented toward those, so that I ended up being an old baby boomer, unreconstructed, second wave feminist women's liver. <laughs> Have you reread them? And if you have, how do you feel about them now? Yeah, I've reread them both several times. I mean, not only because of having my own children, <clears throat> all of whom also turned out to be readers. And my daughter, who found, uh, she, she liked the little house books, but she found Little Women boring and didn't want to get to the end of it. Um, I have reread them. Little Women stands up for me really wonderfully well. Um, little House on the Prairie has a lot of issues that we've become much more aware of. Um, with regard to racism, particularly a depiction of Native Americans in all those books. Um, and yet there are still moments in, in that book and in the entire series that just transport me. Um, so yeah, they stand up. What book captured your imagination as a reader before college and why? That, I, 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 I looked at that for a long time. I mean, sort of all books captured my attention and I can't think, I couldn't think of an, an actual individual book that did that to me um, in the way that Little Women and, um, and uh, Little House on the Prairie did. But I did have this one experience that did come to mind, and it's relevant now because we're about to have the release of this new film called Mary Queen of Scots. And when I was 12, my mother was a great reader. She was English. She was a British war bride, and she was educated in England in the 1930s when there was a great tradition of reading, just reading and memorizing. And she was a, probably a frustrated writer herself. So our, our house was full of books, not necessarily literature, but you know more than trash. And, um, and some of it was literature. I remember reading Lady Chatterley's Lover and great shock and you know um, feeling of getting away with something when I was 12 or 13. But she had a copy of a big fat paperback novel called The Immortal Queen by an American writer who ultimately ended up living in England and Scotland, and it was the story of Mary, Queen of Scots. And I remember being utterly transported by that. Um, I, I recently just, I, it hasn't come yet, I bought a copy of it on Amazon so I could reread it uh, before I see the movie. I think it has a lot, of, my poetry is very, I write poetry, that's what, it, what my research is, and my poetry is extremely narrative. When I think about the experiences I had that were formative, I realized that they were all highly narrative. And um, I think about that book in particular. It was a, it was probably, I don't know, five or six hundred pages. And I, I, it was one of those books I could not stop reading. So it's a kind of an odd book because it was genre historical fiction in a way. But for someone who turned out to be a poet. Is there a book that set you on your professional path to teaching creative writing? And yeah, my mother gave me this book. I, I, I have the copy. After she died, I went through her um, papers and found it. My mother had, as I said, she was educated in England, and she'd grown up memorizing long, pr predominantly narrative <coughs> poems from this old primer that was called Paul Graves Literary Anthology, I think. And she used to recite poems to me, so she really instilled that love in me. But for some reason, she had this book by an American literary critic and Harvard professor whose name was Robert Hillier. He was born in the 1890s. I think he died in the early 1960s. I don't know why she had it. Um, and so it's a book about writing poetry, but it has, of course, a number of examples, shorter examples of poems uh, in it that illustrate the principles that he's trying to, um, to expound upon. And that book, I used to pore over it. I don't think I understood really, you know, how you rhyme and meter when I was young, um, but I loved the examples and probably took them in through the year. So that one probably did set me off in a very obvious way toward writing poetry. Is there a book in your work now that influences you? Well, there are. I have a whole series of books that I, I, in some probably kind of phobic or fetishistic way, have to have with me when I travel and go around. One of them is Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass. One of them is a translation of the um, <coughs> early 20th century German language poet Rainer Maria Rilke, translations by Stephen Mitchell, who's actually an American psychoanalyst, but an extraordinary literary translator as well. Um, I have to have those two books with me, and of course I always have to have the Ur text of uh, Emily Dickinson's poems with me. Um, the, the great Thomas Johnson edition that came out 
1961, I think that was. I also tend to carry around um, a volume of <coughs> excerpted writings by the 20th century French um, political philosopher and um, uh, spiritual thinker, uh, Simone Weil. Um, I wrote uh, a book of poems that emanated entirely from my response to her work. And uh, she's someone who's very important to me. So those are, those are four, four books that I, I carry around with me. Also, I always have a hardback original Roger's thesaurus, where you look the words up in the back, and then you go to the front, and you find these wonderful constellations or clouds of related words. I'm constantly preaching to my students. You must learn to use a thesaurus. Expand your field of diction. Is there a book that you like to share with friends, family, or coworkers, or different books for different people? Again, I, you know, I mean, there's, there's so many of them. <clears throat> I do that kind of probably every day of my life in some way. But the book that did pop into my mind uh, right away when um, I saw this question on your list is a, a kind of an odd one. It's called, um, it came out in the early 1990s, <clears throat> and it's called House as Mirror of Self. It came out from the University of California Press. It was an oversized volume with all kinds of photographs and illustrations. And it was, a, I'm really interested in houses and in domestic spaces. And it was a book by a woman who started out as a, um, I believe, it, uh, an architect. She was in training as an architect in, at Cal Berkeley and went through a divorce, she had young children, and she became aware that all she wanted to do was hang on to her house. And then she became fascinated by houses and people's attachment to their houses. So she ended up training as a Jungian therapist and began to um, interview people about their houses. And she wrote this over the course of about 20 years, absolutely remarkable book that I found transformative in my um, early middle age um, as I was going through family life and moving in houses. And, it's called House is Mirror of Self, and I should remember her name. I'm probably jealous of her, so I get her name wrong. It's either Claire Marcus Cooper or Claire Cooper Marcus, whatever that is. But that's a book I've given to a lot of people over the years. That sounds wonderful. Um, is there a gift book that you remember? I don't remember a gift. I, do you mean that someone gave me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, unless it's, you know, Edward Hillier's First Principles of Verse <laughs> that my mother gave me when I was far too young. Um, no, I don't, don't, I don't. I'm sorry, I don't. Yeah, that's okay. Well, thank you so much for sharing your book clubs well, with thank us. thank you. Thank you for, for keeping actual books as material objects in the library in such wonderful spaces.